Hey Perry Hall students, uh, my name is Dane Carraway. You may remember me as the husband of um, Mrs. Carraway. Um, so I was actually asked to speak at Easter Chapel this week. Obviously we aren't meeting together. So what I wanted to do was um, put together a quick video uh, sharing with you uh, what I was gonna share with you for Easter Chapel. Um, I know it's a day later, but uh, I wanted to make sure I put it out before the weekend. Um, so today is Good Friday, and I don't know about you, but growing up, I thought Good Friday was a weird term for today. I mean, if we are to believe what we think of Good Friday and what we recognize it for being the day that Jesus Christ, our Savior, died. He was maliciously murdered. He was beaten, abused, and mocked, and we call it Good Friday. Now, you may have already thought about, you know, where am I, go where am I going with this, and um, I'll get right to it. Um, what I want to do is kind of talk about that idea of why we call this Good Friday and, you know, what it means for us and why it's such a good thing for us and what would be a good response for us uh, going forward. So first thing is this. Why do we call this Good Friday? Number one is because we aren't good. It's weird, right? This is Good Friday because you and I, we aren't good people. We all have sin in our lives. We all have a, a sin problem. And because of that, we have an issue. There is a, there is a divide between us and God. And here's the issue. The issue is that because of our sin, we can't be at peace with God. Romans 3.23 says this, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us, you know, you, me, our parents, our, our teachers, everyone, all of us, we all have a sin problem. And because of that sin problem means that we fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, the first part of it says this, for the wages of sin is death. So what this verse is saying, not only do we have a sin problem, and it means that we fall short of the glory of God, but because of that sin problem, you and I are going to suffer death. We're going to die one day, and not just natural death, but we're going to die a spiritual death, which means that we are going to live for eternity apart from God. Now, the best part about Romans 6.23 is that that's not the end of the verse. That's halfway through the verse. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why Good Friday is so good for us since that we aren't good. It tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What that means is the reason why we recognize Good Friday and Christ dying for our sins means that we can have life and not have to suffer that death apart from God for eternity. That's what makes it good. That's what makes our eternal life uh, happen. That's what that's what that's how it, uh, it exists because of Christ dying for us. So first thing why we call Good Friday good you and I aren't good. Second thing is this, his death was good enough. Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, God doesn't just tell us that he loves us, right? He doesn't just write us cute text messages like some of us do with, hey, love ya, L-U-V, right? No, he shows he loves us by sending his son to die for us, for dying on the cross for us. And it's good enough. It's good enough that we are able to take care of that that um, that sin um, problem that I spoke about a second ago. And he dies for us. That means that his death is good enough for us that we can have eternal life. So why is Good Friday good? We aren't good and his death was good enough. Third thing is this. It puts us in good standing. Romans 10, 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This takes us out of being in bad standing and being in good standing. I don't know about any of you, but there was a couple times when I was in school where my grades were not in good standing. There was going to be a problem unless I did something, unless something changed, I was going to fail and spend the summer in summer school, you know, and it, it's not where you want to be. You want to be in good standing for us. Like we were in going to be in our sin was going to be that same way. Because of our sin, we are not in good standing with God. But because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross and us accepting that puts us in good standing with him. Because of because not only Christ dying for us, what happens on Good Friday, but him raising, which is why we celebrate Easter Sunday, that means that uh, that means that we will be saved and not have to suffer because of our sin problem. Romans 10:13 says this: for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
So if we give our faith and our trust into Jesus, if we put our faith that he not just died for our sins, but he rose for our sin, we'll be saved, having a relationship with him, calling him not just our Lord, but our Savior. Romans 5, 1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That means that there's no more, there, there, there's not a problem between us and God anymore. It means that we have peace with him. That means that, that, that we have a relationship with him, that we are able to have a connection with God because our sin put us in a place where we weren't able to have a connection with him. But because of the gift of, of him dying on the cross, we can have peace with God. We're in good standing with him. So why is Good Friday so good? Because we aren't, because his death was good enough, and because it puts us in good standing. And finally, it's, it, it's this. Why is Good Friday good? Because it gives us good news to share. It gives us something to talk about. It gives us hope, and not just hope for us, but hope for the whole world. Good Friday is something, and what, what it means for us, not just Good Friday, but also Easter Sunday, what it means for us is so good, and it, it changes everything. This is the most important gift that we can ever receive, right? I mean, like it, it, without, without this, there's no hope. There's nothing. There's no purpose. Good Friday and Easter Sunday gives us good news to share. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. I just want you to, I'm going to put this in perspective before I, I, I read this verse that so many of you know very well. So Jesus dies. For all the disciples, they had heard about Jesus predicting his death and not just saying that he was going to die, but he was going to raise, he was going to rise from the dead. And, but still they felt helpless. They were probably scared. Actually, we know they were scared because think about when Jesus first got captured, where were the disciples? They ran and hid. And think about even Peter, who was the closest to him and, and vocally was his his best follower. And, and he was so always exerting himself as being loyal to Christ to the death, right? This was Peter. When pressed, when when, when asked about if, if he was uh, if he was a follower of Jesus, denied Christ. So they're freaking out. I mean, I just can't help but feel like this could be a similar emotion for what some of you may be feeling and in, in, in what we're dealing with in the world right now. You know, I, 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 my heart really goes out to a lot of you seniors that you're worried about what's going to happen. You know, what, what tomorrow's going to be like, what, are you going to get a graduation? Are you going to have, you know, um, uh, what, what's going to happen with college? And, and for some of you, it's, it, it's already been disappointing because of, you know, all the spring activities and, baseball season and softball season and other spring sports and just the confusion and just, just just scared reality which is right now and what I want to offer to you is not an answer but more towards a hope and a trust in Jesus being the next step so what I love about these guys is that they did they returned back to the place where they knew what they were supposed to do. They gathered together and prayed. I mean, so often during the three years that they followed Jesus, he, he, would, uh, you know, before the next step, before he did the next thing, they, they made a natural rhythm of gathering together and praying and spending time and he taught them. So while they're all kind of in a room and Sunday morning comes and, you know, the women went to the tomb and they see that, you know, He's not there anymore. And the angel kind of declares that, you know, he's not there anymore. And they meet Jesus on the road. He says, hey, go tell the guys to meet me in Galilee. And then what happens next? They get to Galilee and Jesus gives them the next thing they're supposed to do. And that's that they got good news to share. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Listen to me very carefully, especially you older ones. In the midst of this confusing time, in the midst of this time that, you know, the world seems upside down, everything seems crazy. Could this not be the time period 
when you need to be pressing into the Lord like never before, that you need to be praying about uh, about your circumstance, about life like never before, that you need to be taking you know a further step in learning and reading your word like never before, because God is going to reveal some things to you. God's going to give you your next steps on what life's going to bring. We have no clue what's going to happen with this. But here's what we do know. We know that God is still on the throne. We know that he sent his Savior to die for us and for the sins of the world. And that he's given us good news to share. That's what we can put our faith in. That's what we can put our trust in. And that's what we put our hope in. Now, if it had to take a global pandemic for the students of, of, of Perry Hall Christian School that may hear this to, to, to reevaluate what they're living for and living towards, is that going to be one of the outcomes? Hopefully. So what I hope that this does in this time period more than anything is that may the good news, may the gospel cause us to reevaluate our lives, to reevaluate what we find important. To, to, to put our priorities back in order, that we may trust God with our very lives and trust him knowing that God does all things for his glory and our good. He does things and he allows things for his glory and our good. So I don't know where this hits you at. I don't know, you know, what life at home is right now. And I know that you may be scared. I mean, you may just feel uneasy. I know that we do. Um, we're we're kind of, you know, thinking what God is, what is he doing? And I don't, I'm, one of the things that we've just kind of prayed to ourselves is that, God, we don't know what you're doing, but you don't call us to know that. You call us to know you. And I, I just want to encourage you guys to do the same, that in spite of all of this, that it's not important that we know what's what's going on. We, we just need to know who's in control. So as you evaluate this, this week and this weekend and you celebrate Easter Probably like what the disciples did. You're going to celebrate it in a home with very few people than rather than in your churches with hundreds of thousands of people. You're going to celebrate it more like the first Easter. May we celebrate the sacrifice on uh, the sacrifice of Jesus, our Savior on Friday. And even more so him defeating death and raising from the grave on Sunday. And may the, this be what influences us that we share the good news, maybe in our families May this be the, what's on our conversations as we interact with our friends and family on FaceTimes and on Zoom calls. And may this be within, what influences us as we look to our words and we engage with God with the time that we didn't have um, in months and in, in, uh, in years past, that we may allow this to inform us and allow God to direct our steps for when society kind of restarts itself. If we don't come out of this pandemic and the time that we've spent at home and away from our lives and our jobs and our schools, if we don't come, if we don't come out of this closer to Jesus and living with more purpose on how to, uh, and how to pursue whatever he's called us to pursue, then we missed it. Because this is for, for, for all of us, you know, while some of you, some of you are, it's, it's created hard dynamics and, and you're hearing me say this and I don't, I, I, I want to be as completely respectful to your situation as possible. And, you know, that for some that the families that do have folks that are sick and, 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 um, and even kids that are, mom and dad are still working and you've had to watch your younger siblings, I want to be as respectful as possible. So whatever the situation is, if we don't use this opportunity to, to grow closer to our savior and to, and to live for purpose for him and to find out what that is and to hear from him and allow the Holy Spirit to influence our thoughts and our actions and our next steps, then we missed it. For our older students, for our seniors, if, if, if we only look at this as an, we only look at this as lost opportunities for what we thought senior year was supposed to be, but we do not allow the God of our universe to, 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 um, to, to speak into our circumstance and our situation and allow us to allow this to influence our next steps, then we missed it. Don't let you, we can't just allow this to be the time period when the world stopped for a couple months. Allow this to be the opportunity when the world stopped for a couple months, but it allowed me to grow closer to my savior and allow the good news of the Good Friday to be what spurred us on for the good that God caused me to do for the rest of my life. Hey, we love you guys. Um, I'm, I, I can't wait for the day when um, 
uh, Perry Hall Christian School is started back up and I'm able to come back and see you in the hallways and see so many of your smiling faces as you're heading to and from class. We're praying for you, for all the faculty and staff that um, will interact with this. Thank you guys so much for all of a sudden becoming distant learning <laughs> um, uh, teachers when that wasn't what you signed up to be. So for everyone's uh, just, you know, just, just being filled with the gospel and doing the best that they can with what they can, just know that you're making your savior proud. Um, I'm so appreciate our, the school that my kids go to and my wife um, goes to for works at, excuse me, um, for just the servant heart that we have. And I know that just comes from the very top from from Pastor Dave and um, from Miss uh, Mrs. Ruff um, all the way down. So um, we love you guys. I'm so proud to be a part of this community and um, may God bless all of you. Enjoy this weekend. Happy Easter to all of you.